Now, from climate change-related matters, let's take a look at a study by the Star Ghana Foundation, which has revealed that there is silence in the country because of fear of victimization by both individuals and civil society organizations. The study also revealed that most Ghanaians were now investing their time in activities that were personally beneficial than in endeavors that were of national interest. Samuel Mbura has more in this report. The revelation was contained in the Active Citizenship Strategy document by Star Ghana Foundation. Lead strategist at Star Ghana Foundation, Mauli Dake, touched on the issue of victimization. So one of the things we learned from the process was one of the reasons why active citizenship is in a decline. As Antiesta put it, people engage... Well, we get uh, more detail from this uh, research piece uh, as I am joined uh, by, and I'll, I'll just bring you the details of uh, that shortly, Executive Director of the Star Ghana Foundation, Ibrahim Tanko Amidu. Uh, good morning, Mr. Amidu. Uh, thank you for joining us. Before delving into the findings, uh, what motivated this research? Can you share? Mr. Tanko, you would have to unmute so we can hear what you're saying. Please unmute so we hear what, what you're saying. Yeah, sorry about that. Right. Um, so good morning and uh, a pleasure to be with you. Um, actually, it wasn't a research. Um, it's a part of the development of a strategy to right. guide Stagana's work in the area of um, promoting active citizenship at all levels of uh, our country's uh, governance, from uh community to national mm -hmm. levels. Right, so, so that was the motivational factor? Yes, please. Okay. Tell us a bit about the severity of this culture of silence as, as we have it now, as established by this strategic piece that you've, you've uh, you know, come up with. Well, to describe it as a culture of silence um, may be taking something out of context. Our objective is to explore ways in which we can enable or support citizens to be more active in development processes, mm. whether at the community, at the district, or at the national levels. And so in terms of looking at why is it that civic activism, the willingness of citizens to be active in development processes, why is it going down? Um, and one of the factors that was um, 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 identified was the fact that there was a fear of victimization, whether at the community level for speaking up, for standing up for rights, or for trying to do things, or at the national level to I mean, where it happened. So it's within that context that we spoke about people's fear of being victimized affecting their willingness and interest in participating in development um, activities, whether in the area of governance, whether it's in the area of social development or economic empowerment. We have had in our past, our checkered past as a country, uh, a lot of instances where people have not been free to express themselves, whether media, whether individually, whether at the organizational level. So if you say it is not a culture of silence, how would you term it? I'm not saying it's not a culture of silence, but I'm saying it is situated within a broader perspective. Right. So it's both a culture of silence, but also a culture of inactivity. Mm. Speaking, uh, being active citizens goes beyond speaking. Right. There is speaking on salient issues, but also being willing to participate, either as volunteers or whatever, in development processes. And so there's a culture of silence, there's a culture of inactivity. And they, uh, I mean, find uh, the causes uh, rooted partly in this uh, fear of victimization. Right, so a culture of silence and a culture of inactivity going hand in hand. Uh, yeah. what, what else were the findings or what else did you put in this strategy, salient bits that are worthy of mention? Well, 
One is that, you know, sustainable development requires the active participation of citizens at all levels of governance. That citizens can participate or can be active in various ways, donating time, donating resources, volunteering to um, undertake um, community development activities, or, you know, being active in governance processes, whether at the local or the national levels. Right. That citizens' inability to do this is a result of a number of factors. One, lack of organization. Two, lack of funding. Three, the fear of victimization. Four, the values undergirding our citizenship. And we cited the example of uh, uh, football fans in um, Japan who were reputed to have stayed back after a World Cup match right. to clean up the stadium before leaving. I don't know if you've heard of that. I, I remember that. Incident. And then you contrast that with the culture here where invariably, you know, people say you chop from your website or this is not my responsibility, this is government responsibility. So that whole issue about values also came up. You mm. know, so these were the factors that we saw. And we indicated that Star Ghana's rule or contribution could be one to continue with these national conversations around how we change the value systems to one that supports active citizenship, ensuring that the next generation grow up with the right values, so to speak. You know, how do we help to strengthen the organizations that mobilize citizens, you know, to be involved in development processes? And three, how do we source for fund, uh, funding to finance uh, or to support uh, active citizenship initiative. And we also under, uh, score the importance of the media in challenging us, the values and the ways in which we are inactive, but also in facilitating, you know, active citizenship initiatives. So these were the key highlights of um, the uh, strategy. Uh, do, do tell me, Mr. Amidu, now, were there any new things, uh, substantially new uh, developments in this in this uh, uh, this new strategy. You say it's not a research piece. This new strategy that you put out, uh, compared to previous research pieces or strategic pieces you've come up with, and what are the core recommendations? Well, one that I would describe as new, in a way, is the ways in which citizens organize. Right. Um, those of us who were um, grown, I mean, uh, adults in the 1970s or the young, young adults in the 19, late 1970s saw the whole mobilization around the push for democratic governance. So we remember the people's, um, the movement for freedom and justice, um, the alliance of um, professional bodies, you know, that spearheaded that. That was citizen mobilization taking this particular form. Now with the advent of social media, young people are organizing in different ways and are focusing on issues beyond, you know, what our generation focused on, which was on um, the fight for democracy, um, for inclusive um, access to services. Now the youth are fighting for uh, greater voice, greater ac accountability, and, you know, um, yeah, so uh, voice accountability. Those are the key areas that we see that the youth are beginning to focus now. And they are organizing more loosely than we used to have. So if you take either um, the movement for freedom of, uh, for uh, freedom and justice, um, you take even Kume Preko and look at the ways in which new forms, these new ways of organizing, such as uh, the economic freedom fighters, um, et cetera, are organizing. You see that it's more loose. It's um, uh, they rely on um, the greater use of uh, social media, et cetera. And so this needs to be, uh, need to be taken into consideration in any strategy us, you know, supporting citizens to be more active. Particularly Mr. Amidu, uh, we're grateful immensely for your time and your contribution on Joy News Desk. Thank Ibrahim so Tanko Amidu, Executive Director of the Star Ghana Foundation. Thank you so much, sir.